Now, let's start with the J.K. Rowling story. Uh, the author has dared to police uh, to arrest her as she lashed out at Scotland's new hate crime laws. The new measures came into force today and aimed to tackle harm caused by hatred. This is on the grounds of age, disability, race, religion, sexual orientation and transgender identity. Now, supporters of the new laws insist that they will make Scotland more tolerant, but critics, such as the Harry Potter author, say the legislation could stifle free speech and fails to extend extend these protections to women. Um, look, this is a particularly thorny subject. Ed, perhaps I could start with you and, and your views on this. Um, some people try and have a conversation about this particular matter by saying, oh, how do you define a woman? Um, and uh, J.K. Rowling has been particularly vehement against, um, I don't know, some of the changes in dealing with transgender issues. Where do you stand on these uh, political hot <coughs> potatoes? I stand with uh, J.K. Rowling on this. I think she's quite right to... Um point out the flaws in some of this uh, debate and I think that the intolerance that has been generated by uh, as it were some aspects of the trans lobby is um, outrageous. I mean obviously one supports trans people, one supports people transitioning but there are certain red lines which I've always felt strike me as complete common sense. One is sport uh, where if you've been through puberty as a man and then you transition to being a woman you are competing unfairly against women that goes without saying. Uh, I think self-declaration allowing you into women's spaces is outrageous. So the opportunity for somebody who is still uh, genetic, uh, still a man in terms of you know uh, their physical makeup, even if they self-identify as a woman, should not be in a women's prison. And thirdly, I think the eradication of women uh, from language, you know, so talking about people who become pregnant rather than women, is really outrageous. And women have fought for their rights. I mean, I know you haven't had a single woman on your show tonight, James, but generally speaking, they are very well represented um, and they fought for their rights. And to have this kind of counter narrative is really outrageous. Uh, Matthew, um, this is a political hot potato and in particular for the Labour Party, it's, it's tricky because the SNP, uh, you know, and, and, you know, having pushed through uh, various aspects of this and Scottish Labour having pushed through various aspects of this, you know, this is something they support. Um, if... Well, the Scottish Labour only supported it when it uh, pushed for a lot of changes to it. So there are some sensible changes that have been done. I personally, if I had been an MSP, I wouldn't have voted for it because I think there were huge flaws in the, in, the, in this bill. So do you support J.K. Rowling in what she's suggesting then? Well, I think I, mean, I, I think J.K. Rowling needs to be uh, listened to, and I think that uh, I think she's being a bit provocative today. I hope she's like a politician. Do you get support arrested. her or not, Matthew? Well, I mean, J.K. Rowling was one of the Labour. J.K. Parties Rowling like... should be listened to. What is that? She was one of the Labour Party's biggest donors. So um, to, 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 you know, for, to, well, to... she won't be now. And I think that we, you know, I, I think you, I would like a situation where uh, people on the left can have a conversation with J.K. Rowling, but then rather than pushing. But you oh, ask Keir Starmer, but you ask Keir Starmer, and, and you ask. He's him, very clear what a woman is. Okay, so what is a woman? It's it's a biological female. Okay, because that's not quite what he says. Because it is what he says okay, now. Okay, how look, do you, he got embarrassed you, about it. The best person. No, 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 but how do you deal with the issues? So, say for example, somebody has decided to tra transition. Yeah. And I totally agree with Ed when he says, "Look, you've got people who go through puberty, Absolutely. and frankly, it becomes extremely difficult when it comes to sport. I'm yeah. afraid you do have to." And Keir's been very clear that it's up to individual sports. Okay. And would err on the but side. Say, assist, for example, somebody has decided decide. to transition. Yeah. What loo are they allowed to use? If they have, if they have formally transitioned under the law. Okay, then they should use uh, the, the, the the loo that is their agenda, the agenda that has been assigned to them by the law. Okay, but if you just decide that you're going to call yourself a woman today, um, then you should use the agenda for your the biological sex that you were. But born. isn't that part of the problem, which the trans lobby? And I'm not sure I necessarily agree with every aspect of things that they ask uh, ask for. But what they would say is that the day that you decide that you are going to transition is that the day the discrimination starts. And if and you are right not, to a certain extent, and if you are not able to have a transitionary way. And I think there are ways and means to deal with it, but I think that we politically have become so bound up with talking about biological females and males, um, not recognising the fact that some people do need to transition. It must be the hardest uh, decision. Absolutely. I don't, I mean, I, so, I don't yeah. get it. And I think, I think, I think Labour's position is sensible, which is against self-identification in terms of uh, what, the, what the SNP wanted to do before they were stopped by Westminster. Do you think, uh, do you but, think but, though, if, Ed, do you think we've over-politicised this? That means that we can't have a sensible debate. Yes, I mean, I, and when you were talking, I mean, it's a that's a really weird thing to say, but when you're talking about lose, that kind of sums up the nuance and the grey area. So for me, look, if I'm a man and I want to transition to be a woman, that is a very difficult process, mm. but it shouldn't allow me, I think, to go into a woman's changing room. 
Because the, the women in that chamber... When should it this allow is, you, uh, Exactly, and there's a very nuanced debate, and we should have a debate about that. And I'm perfectly willing to hear somebody from the trans lobby saying, yeah, no, no, you should be able to go in the women's change room. I really don't think I'd change my mind. Lose, weirdly, are sort of more of a grey area, because you can, in theory, shut the cubicle. I mean, yeah, exactly. actually, the to be fair, fair if, if, somebody, if somebody is um, transitioning and they've kind of got their got their art sorted pretty well. You're not actually going to know. So, exactly. But I do think that this is the area where we be, have to be things, able to yeah. have a sensible exactly. conversation. Yes, because it's more things like rape crisis centres which have exactly. particularly upset And JK nobody Rowling. should be able to cause uh, and, and commit a sexual crime against any other human being. Absolutely. And that's and what we need to go against. And it has become public. So normal you know, women who have concerns about this are kind of drowned out and demonised for just saying, look, I'm going in my change room. I don't want to change next to a man, tricky, even though that man might identify as a woman. Tricky subject. However, I'm sure there's more to discuss, but perhaps we can have more sensible conversations. However, let's talk about the government. Oh, what a, what a surprise. They're facing a rebellion from their own backbenchers over plans to criminalise homelessness. Uh, rebels claim that as many 40 Conservatives from both the left and the right of the party are unwilling to support the government's criminal justice bill, as is. A group of 40 would easily be able to overturn the government majority of 53, if backed fully by opposition MPs too. Um, Matthew, I'll start with you on this one. I find it absolutely astonishing that the government is looking at uh, the symptom and not the cause. Absolutely. Um, homelessness is a particular problem. I don't want to see people sleeping rough in the no. streets. I don't want to see people begging. I don't want to see uh, people causing a fray or, or, totally. or, you know, and we've got, clearly, you go into the West End of London or any major city, there are people sleeping rough yep. left, right and centre. Some of it is because some people do sleep rough, you know, no matter how Which is a amazing, small bit, a bit small hardcore. Bit of it. But some of it, they must be telling us that something's gone wrong here. Absolutely. Well, if you remember during the pandemic, one of the, uh, the positives of the pandemic was we solved the homeless problem overnight because everybody was given shelter and there literally wasn't anybody sleeping on the streets. With the sticking plaster so yeah. that we then took away. Which we took away when we should have put into, in place a long-term solution. And instead, uh, criminalising people, it's just going to... It's the law of unintended consequences. What's it going to do? The police say they can't attend mental health crises. How are the police going to... If you criminalise it, it's just not going to be enforced. It's, it's just... It's, 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 it's just I, trying to... I don't people want to trying appear. to position themselves to toy leadership. I don't appear, want to appear as if I'm just bashing anything anything or everything the government does, but I do That's how you appear, Jay. It is, because I genuinely despair that... No, Try and defend this, Ed. No common sense has been applied to this. That exactly. If somebody is sleeping rough on the streets, there are plenty of reasons, and sometimes it is down to that individual and, and them having taken wrong choices. But in order to get them off the streets, legislation and criminalising is not the way to yeah. do it. Is it? Or you tell me. Would you rebel if you were in the Commons still? Well, I haven't looked in detail at the legislation, Matthew, but um, so I'm not going to answer the question, having berated you earlier for not answering uh, the question. But I do agree, you know, that uh, often homelessness is a symptom, not a cause, that people who are homeless have many deep-seated problems. It is not simply often, weirdly, in the case of homeless people, often if you just gave them a, a front door key and here's a home, it wouldn't actually work because they've got big, big... They've got major and problems, problems and issues. And, and mental health you tackle those. ...problems. Um, <clears throat> I, I mean, I understand that something behind this legislation is, to a certain extent, an updating of the Vagrancy Act, which is a 19th century law. So it might well be that the government has a justification to look at this again. Mm. It may be that they've got it wrong in terms of how they've interpreted the best way to upgrade, uh, update the vagrancy law okay. so the police can use it effectively. Let's, let's move on, because time is against us. But uh, you'd be disappointed if I didn't talk about the day, uh, deputy Labour leader, Angela Rayner. She's under growing pressure to release tax advice and other documents relating to the sale of a former council home, as some in her own party are said to be growing restless over the issue. Senior Tories have been calling for more transparency on her property dealings, which may have seen her dodge capital gains tax, wrongly came a council tax discount and possibly breach election law. And I think, look, I, on one hand, I see this as a political vendetta and is it really necessary? And on the other hand, though, if you are vying to be Deputy Prime Minister, frankly, you should be able to stick to the rules of the law. Why has she not nuked this? Well, I think she, I think she has nuked it in the sense that people like Sue Gray, who's uh, a case chief oh, of staff... Oh, if you trust her. Well, uh, well uh, she was oh, the... Steady chief. on, James. Yes. She's a very reputable civil yeah. servant. Yeah, absolutely. Um, um, I, I, I think what's happened is, is this has been checked out. I think if, if she'd been found to that she, she did owe any money, she would have been out with a grovelling apology mm. and a chequebook several days ago. Once okay. the police and the council looking properly, she'll be found to have done nothing wrong. You reckon? Uh, what would she do? Well, you, you, uh, you nailed it with both points one it it does feel like a political vendetta but i and i slightly felt you know call the dogs off angelina 
But at the same time, I also do accept if you're going to be the de potentially the deputy prime minister in six months' time, I'm afraid this is the new normal for prominent yeah, Labour politicians. It, they will get the scrutiny, just as people like Nadim Zahawi got the scrutiny and, or whatever. And everyone, well, just everyone should questions. know. Everyone should receive the scrutiny. However, yeah. all I can leave you with is news that NASA are planning to grow plants on the moon, which could save us all. And I'm sure. Tell that me that more. Can unite, well, sadly, I can't. <laughs> uh, but that can unite us all because we've been disagreeing on pretty much everything.